Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I'm Joel. We are here to talk about our April reading month, which was... Sad. A bit of a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I did manage to finish eight books, although the quality of them is kind of all over the place. Yeah. How did you do? I did two, but yeah. they were two I did with you. Yes. And we'll explain that in a moment. Yeah, we will. So, just to quickly explain, if you follow along, you already know, but if not... In April, we spent most of the month in Pullman, Washington, living out of a hotel, working out of a hotel, a tiny hotel room, by the way, tiny. for uh, two full grown men and our dog, Jameson, or Jamie, uh, while she was being treated for a nasal tumor. She got radiation treatment, and she's doing great. She's doing really good, yeah. She is. She's a strong lady. And uh, just, you know, stress and um, not being home and running around a lot and trying to keep her busy and we were sick for a portion of that time we were in Pullman. It was a lot. So yeah. I am amazed I managed to finish eight books. But again, I feel like they're kind of all over the place in terms of quality. So but that's what that's why April is the month that it was. It was. Um yeah. I had a hard time concentrating. I'm working on a big project at work. Yeah. Um with politics, work Jamie, yeah. I just didn't have it in me to read, and I finally picked up the book that I started in um, April, and I'm beginning to finish it now, yeah. and I'm I'm really loving it. So it's helping me here um, with my book because it's yeah. it, it's a fun read, and I'll uh, explain more later. It's yeah. it's difficult too, and we'll talk at uh, once we talk about what we did read. We'll talk about what we're currently okay. reading that's carrying into the month of May, and uh, what we are planning to get to in the month of May and uh, all of that. But uh, yeah, I had, I had forgotten about politics. Politics, <laughs> it's a mess. And we live in Montana where there's just a lot going on in that realm as well. Um, and again, just a quick thank you everybody for being very supportive about Jamie and yeah. asking how she's doing and really caring and all of that. It's been really nice. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so let's get going. Um, I forgot a book oh. when we wrapped up March. So I think we should start oh, yeah. with that. I don't know how I managed to do it because I actually had it on my list of books to go through and somehow I skipped it and didn't realize I had skipped it. So, and it was a book that you had been wanting me to read for a really long time and I finally got around to it. So I figured I would, I want to mention it now. It's A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman. Yeah. Love the book. And it took me so long to read it. When did you read A Man Called Uva? Uh, probably... 22 maybe really i thought yeah. i thought it was longer ago maybe 21 end maybe. of 21 beginning of 22 yeah um, it's, it's been a while and you've wanted me to read it ever since yeah. <laughs> and i finally got to it and uh your stepmother yeah loved it as well so she's wanted me to read it and i just was a constant disappointment so i figured i'm gonna stop that but you did it a little backwards we actually saw the movie <laughs> a man called Otto with tom hanks yes before you read it so it it probably gave you a little bit more of what was going on. And honestly, I usually like books more better than movies, but I did like the movie. I, I just thought the characters were as developed, but you got to mm, feel them more. Yeah, I, I, and I think it did color how I felt about the book as well, because I think the, given that I had watched the movie so recently, when I as I was listening to the audio of the book, which, by the way, is read by J.K. Simmons, and that is awesome, a perfect casting... Uh, I kept thinking, that's not how they did it in the movie. Or that's not really how this character functioned. Like, they're a little bit more... Like, the character of the neighbor. Um, she is, in the book, a little bit more like Otto. But in the movie, she's like this big, warm hug, constantly. Mm -hmm. And it, there's more of a contrast for her, between her and Otto. And I think I actually liked the way the movie did it yeah. better. So And the actress was amazing. Oh, she was so good. She's so good. So good. Um, but it's kind of funny. I knew what was going to happen in the beginning. And Greg just knows I love this book. And it's yeah. just this beautiful book. And the opening has a very slightly disturbing scene. Yeah. And Greg is like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was not prepared. I didn't know. Yeah. Um, so there are trigger warnings in that book. A um, little bit of suicidal ideation, some stuff like that. Uh, we'll go into it, but just FYI. But it's a really good book, and uh, the movie was good. I know a lot of people kind of had an attitude about the movie. I get, I get it. I love it, and it. I typically do. I liked it. Yeah, and I think Tom Hanks was good in that. I, he, so. I was eyes open to Tom Hanks, mm -hmm. but he actually proved me wrong. He yeah, did really he good. good. And his son plays the young Otto, which is kind yeah, of interesting. Yeah, it's really cute. So, so that's my callback to March because I forgot to mention it. 
Um, and then we'll just kind of quickly run through some things. Uh, I did read If I Survive You by Jonathan Escoffrey, which I listened to on audio. I liked it. Uh, it's sort of linked stories about the life of a boy whose family immigrated to the U.S. and um, the difficulties they had settling in and the sort of difference between him and his father and his brother because they were all born outside of the U.S., but he was born in the United States. Is Jamie sleeping? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's it's a good book. I liked Night of the Living Res better. I think it does a lot of the things that If I Survive You does but a little bit better. And part of why I wanted to try to fit it in is that it is something I listed in my Pulitzer Prize predictions. Pulitzer Prize will be announced on May 8th. I'll link my predictions down below. Um, so I liked it, but I, there are other books that I definitely liked more. You like Night of the Living Res more? Yes, for okay. sure. And of course, I liked it. I read it too. So Night of the Living Res. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's. I definitely liked Night of the Living Res more. Still rooting for Demon Copperhead. <laughs> um, but... We'll see what happens on May 8th. And then there's the book that we the first book that we did together. So why don't you talk about it? Christmas Wish List. Uh, Christmas Wish List by N.R. Walker. Yes. Um, Mel and Mel Romance. Um, it was actually the second in the series. Mm. I had read the first, Tic Tac Mistletoe, mm. and it was really kind of cute. And it was like right at five hours, and that was a perfect timing for us to get to Pullman. Yeah. So we we read it going over to Pullman. And um it was it was it was a cute little book. You yeah. know, we need that little cinnamon bun energy. Energy. Yeah. And it was good. But what I liked about it is in that the mold that they do is they meet, they fall in love, they have a major conflict, all because they don't communicate, yeah. and then they get together. Yeah. And this didn't have it. And we were having a bet early on in the book like we kept looking at each other like so what's the conflict gonna be oh, he's what gonna are, do this. He's yeah what, what's the miscommunication gonna be no. and there wasn't one which was really refreshing it was a slow com bit of communication but it was mm -hmm. there was no fight and i found that very refreshing and I, I think if there was any miscommunication it was more centered around like i feel like i'm all in on this rela potential relationship, but I don't know how you feel. And I'm and, all in, but so, I don't know how you feel. Yeah, so, like, that level of miscommunication, where it's, like, early in a relationship and you know you're excited about it, but you don't know how the other person feels, so, like, and I can deal with that. It's yeah. not like you think somebody cheated on you and they didn't, so. Um, I thought it was a little fun um, how they got together. Of yeah. course, one was a chef, and I love that. Always fun. And the other was an inn owner, and the inn owner hired the chef to come cook for Christmas. Just 10 days, come cook for yeah. Christmas, get me through the hard time, and then you can go on your way. And um, so it was really kind of cute. Yeah. And it felt organic. It's not like, it, it felt like they, it, there wasn't like a contrived scenario where they get together. I apologize, Jamie's barking. She's still she's feisty. feeling better. <laughs> yeah, she's still feisty. <laughs> We're happy to hear it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that was nice as well. And uh, so in the first one, an Australian guy comes to this town of Hartbridge, Montana, and he crashes into a snowbank outside the house of the, the eventual love interest. Right. In this one, it's yeah another Australian guy who had been living in Missoula, which is where we live. Yeah. And he's going, oh, he wants to go, his, he ends the job he was working at, so he wants to go west, but he has this job that he's going to work temporarily during the holidays. Okay. So that was cute. Um and it was, as Joel said, it was exactly what we needed at that moment. We needed something comforting and warm and fuzzy and cinnamon bun. And it really hit all of those vibes. So, Do you want to just go ahead and tie the next book in? We might as well, yeah, I guess. Then on the yeah. way home, we did... Merry um, Christmas Cupid. Merry Christmas Cupid. Which By Anwar Walker again. Yeah. Same storyline. Yeah. Um, so you had the two Australians, the two Americans... And um, another guy comes into town. Mm -hmm. He just broke up with his uh, longtime husband, mm -hmm. bought a house to remodel, and the lumberjack firewood like man. Like litter lumberjack, up. yeah. <laughs> and, um, and the lumberjack was bisexual, so mm -hmm. they actually tied in a bisexual character. And, um, his and his father is adorable. Totally adorable. Totally adorable. Like my dad. Just like but, your dad, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, then they get together. So the six, uh, the whole story revolves si with all six of them, yeah. in and out. And um, so book one, book two, and book three mm. all ties together. Yeah. Same characters, and they're just fun characters. They and are. They learn how to be um, gay camaraderie in the small town. Yeah, and 
one thing that was a concern in the second book and kind of came back a little bit was that question of coming out and acceptance. And that really plays in heavily in both of them. In the second one, uh, the guy had been previously married. He had two kids and he didn't know how people would feel about him coming out of the closet. So that was part of his journey in the second book. And in this third one, um, the bisexual lumberjack hasn't come out, hasn't really accepted that he is bisexual. Well, he knows he's bisexual, but he's, again, kind of worried about, like, what's it going to mean? And then once he starts a relationship and sort of tiptoes into it, he starts, because it's a small town, he's worrying about what are other people going to think of this. Yeah. And, you know, not everybody responds great. Um, but by and large, it's that wholesome energy that you need, so you know there's going to yeah. be a happy ending. Fun so, books. We need more yeah. bisexual lumberjack books out there. We don't we? <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Anybody out there, get writing. Yes. <laughs> All right, what do you got yeah. next? And then the rest is going to be kind of me heavy. I won't spend a whole lot of time talking about some of these because the next one, Rumble Rests His Case by uh, John Mortimer, I didn't really like. This is short stories. I read it while we were in Pullman. How often did I complain to you about this? Okay, picture this. Pullman, Washington. <laughs> yeah. Tiny hotel room. Mm -hmm. Two beds. Sick dog. Husband reading a book he hates. Yeah. You, that was his You life. paint that picture. Yeah. And by the way, just to add to the whole hotel scene, these beds were so tiny <laughs> that we couldn't fit in one bed with Jamie. So we had, so we had to sleep in separate beds. Uh, and the room was not much larger than the beds. Yeah. And uh, in order to make sure one, at least one of us could try to sleep, we had to alternate because Jamie would not switch beds. So we had to switch <laughs> beds. So that's the vibe yeah. of me and Rumpel rests his case. Like, it's fine. It's supposed to be mystery stories. They're not very mysterious. Um, so I actually did try to unhaul this, <laughs> but at my local used bookstore, Oh, hell no. They, well, maybe, because they don't actually have any of his books on no. their shelf, but they, sometimes they'll tell you, okay, we don't want this now, but try again. And that's what they told me with this one, but they don't have any of his books. So it's not like the shelf is crowded. Right. So I don't know, but yeah, I did try to trade this in. They didn't take it, which is the only reason it's still <laughs> here. And that's kind of how that went. Um, Moving along, the next one was kind of the same thing. It was A Lesson in Dying by Anne Cleves. And when I did a Friday Reads about that, I mentioned that I was already forgetting it. I've forgotten even more about it. Like, I honestly don't even remember what that book was about. Um, it was fine. It just was not done very well. Um, Anne Cleves did the, what's it called? The Two Rivers Mysteries oh. with Matthew Venn. Uh, you read the first one last year. I yeah. read and we the liked, first two. We liked yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But that was, this one was like 20 years ago. And she's definitely grown as a writer since then. So uh, that's all I'll say about that. And then we had The Duchess of Bloomsbury Street, which you turned me on to 84 Charing Cross Road. Right. Yes. Um, from Love and Saffron. No. Um, um, yes, yeah, Love, and, Love Saffron. and Saffron. And then someone recommended uh, 84 Charing Cross Road based on how much we liked Love and Saffron. And you got to it first. Right. And you loved it. It was one of your favorite nonfiction books of the year. I, it was probably the favorite, yeah. Uh, I can't remember. Both those books I highly recommend. Yeah. And then I did this one backwards as well because we watched the movie 84 Charing Cross Road with Anthony Hopkins and Judy Dench and Anne and Bancroft. Bancroft. Love her. Uh, it was so good. It was. We watched that in January or February and I immediately ran out <laughs> and uh, got a copy of the book from the library and loved it. So I want to find a used copy of 84 Charing Cross Road because... Yeah, it fits. Just a very special used copy would be yeah. amazing. And I I am loving the journey that it's going to take to find it because yeah. the, the fact that it's going to be a little bit of effort is kind of, it it, it, it fits with the book. Yeah. I travel so. a lot. So when I go into used bookstores in other cities, like I go to Billings, which mm -hmm. is five hours away, I'll call Greg and it's like, oh, they have this or they have this. Yeah. And I find some really fun things, but I had to do a video call so he can see them all. So somewhere <laughs> in my travels or his travels, we will find, we will find it. both these books and... Um, yeah. Make them a perfect set. It will be. And even so if they don't match. Yeah. But so uh, in Pullman, there's a really great used bookstore. It's uh, actually, we know someone who lives in Pullman and she wasn't too excited about it because they don't have a lot of new books. And she wants a, a used bookstore that will have more like new books. And I totally get that. But if you're just visiting, it's fun. Really fun to browse through and find stuff. So they did not have 84 Charing Cross Road, but they did have the Duchess of Bloomsbury Street, which is a sort of sequel. So in 84 Charing Cross Road, 
Helene Hanf talks about how much she wants to go to London, and in this book she actually gets to go to London at long last because 84 Charing Cross Road has been published and a publisher in the UK buys the rights to it and they invite her out to do publicity. So of course she's like, I am absolutely going to go. And it's about her arriving there and it does have this big emotional payoff because you know how much this means to her. And again, I mentioned this in a Friday Reads, but I I can relate to that. I imagine you can relate to that yeah. because we wanted to go to Italy longer than even we met. But once we met, we talked about it and we kept making plans and we had to keep postponing them. And that's sort of what happens to her. You're yeah. even wearing a shirt I'm from Italy. Shirt, yeah. We stayed in this hotel. Yeah. Is, I think that's the one. Yeah. yeah. So we stayed right there. Right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and it's really cute. I'm very excited to read it. I have yeah. not read that one yet. So it'll probably be on my book uh, list after this. I may actually do it between so mm. I can do mine in Pride Month. Yeah. I, it took me a while to read it because of everything that was going on. It's small enough that I could have done it in like a single day under usual circumstances. But, you know, it is what it is. So I'll probably do it next. Yeah. Uh, and then we did Merry Christmas Cupid on the way back. And then I did... Boulder, once we got back by Ava Baltazar, this is another really, this is 105 pages, but the book itself doesn't start until page seven. So it's actually under 100 pages. It's translated by Julia Sanchez. I really liked this book a lot. It is shortlisted, I believe, for the International Booker Prize. It's about a queer woman who is very independent. She loves her freedom. She's working as a chef on a freighter. And that is kind of perfect because she doesn't have to spend a lot of time talking to people during the day. She can move around and never feel like... She's one of those people, like, um, a rolling stone gathers no moss. That is, like, her essence. But in her travels, uh, she meets a woman named Samsa. And basically falls in love, is obsessed. And uh, as she travels around, she keeps coming back to Samsa. And they have this very erotic relationship. And then Samsa gets a job in Reykjavik. And our protagonist, who you don't know her name, but Samson nicknames her Boulder, um, decides to go with her. So well, the way the book is framed is that it's about the decision that Samson makes in Reykjavik to become a mother and the difficulty that our protagonist has sort of adapting to that life. But there have already been, because a couple of years have passed by the time Samson has that decision. And... Uh, our protagonist is already having a bit of a hard time because she's settled down. She feels like she's in a rut and she's trying desperately to find ways to assert her own authority and freedom and identity. And then the fact that she's just aggressively does not want to be a mother and that she's making this huge compromise for Samsa is the central conflict of the book. But problems have already started and it's really interesting and I liked it a lot. I actually was just talking to... Uh, this Today, I sent a message to Chelsea from Montana yeah. Book Company to recommend it to her. Because um, I forgot to bring it up during Independent Bookstore Day. That's... Oh, well. Uh, I'm going to try that. It sounds really good. It is really interesting. Um, and it's small. only small. Dunk that in your coffee. And then the only other book I finished was The Netanyahu's. Which, again... <laughs> what was the experience of me reading this book like? <laughs> Worse than the other book. Yes. But <laughs> I complained a lot. Yeah. And... Um, and valid complaints too. I mean, I, I think I I don't think I could have tolerated the book. Yeah. So at the point you're watching this, I will have already published my Pulitzer Prize deep dive on the Netanyahu's. I had wanted to read the Netanyahu's before the announcement of the new Pulitzer Prize for Fiction winner, which will be May eighth. And when everything started to happen with Jamie, I kind of threw that plan out and said, "Well, I'm just not going to get to it. It's not going to happen." And then after I read Boulder, I felt in a good enough place to do a little bit of solid reading. And I managed to read it really quickly, but I think I managed to read it really quickly because frankly, I hated it. <laughs> so, um, and that's the only thing that kind of pulled me through so quickly. I was, I was like flipping the pages like, I don't, this is ridiculous. After about the halfway point, I'm dropping yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he totally said that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I'll just link the full video down below if you'd like a lot more about only, that. Only because you own it and only because it's a Pulitzer Prize. I think that's why it did not get thrown across the room. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also because I, the part of it that actually infuriated me the most was, uh, the afterward, which I didn't read until the morning after. That's horrible. Yeah, yeah. And again, I'll link the video down below. Because uh, I don't want to get my blood up. It's hot here today. <laughs> it's the first hot day here. We didn't even get a spring. No. We went right from freezing weather to 80 degree weather. And I went from like 
flannels and sweaters to and a t-shirt shirt and shorts and it's just anyway so unfortunately I, like under normal circumstances i'd say i don't even want this book in the house i'm gonna get rid of it but I, it's a pulitzer book and i own all of them so even gone with the wind is still on my shelf so it's still gonna be here but i didn't like it um that is everything i read uh so i've talked a lot about my stuff do you want to start talking about <laughs> what you're currently reading um i'm currently reading uh, becoming ted uh, this was released in the UK, so we got this from Queer Lit, yeah. and they sent it to us. Um, Ted gets a divorce from, or no, his husband leaves him, mm. and he has this dream. He works in a, his family ice cream parlor, but he has a dream of doing something bigger. Mm. I didn't know what the bigger thing was. Greg did, and I then did. when I got to it, it's like, oh, did you know? And it's like, he wants to become a drag queen. Yeah, I was like, okay, this is going to be fun and happy and exciting i will throw out there there are some triggers in here i yeah. mean some very heavy triggers yeah. um abuse of relationships um mental abuse physical abuse um i don't spoil too much there's an abortion that happens mm. and it it's really heavy but then they bring back the present time mm. that's the all in flashbacks but then they bring back mm. the present time which makes this a really fun book yeah. i mean i'm between wanting to cry mm. i give out uh Ugh, and then i'm laughing crazy because yeah. it's funny so it's really really a sweet and, book but there are triggers and i'm really looking forward to reading yeah, it it's gonna be a fun one uh, so the experience of Joel reading that book in the beginning was we were we'd be sitting and we were reading and uh, every couple of pages Joel's like oh my god <laughs> I'm, so, yeah I'm like oh god yeah and then, oh this was funny yeah and so, then you'd and then you'd laugh at something and yeah. smile so, so it, it, it bounces back and forth but yeah. warning no. but we loved the Secret Life of Albert Antwistle which was Matt Cain's previous book which oddly that one was published in the UK and the US and this one is not no. I can't explain it no. I can't but uh, both. Um, this is going to be on um, one of my top lists, so I think yeah. I'm really, really going to enjoy it. I'm three quarters of the way, yeah. and um, I think I'm going to really enjoy it. So it's going to be up there with Albert Antwistle, and uh, I think I'm just going to really enjoy it. Yeah. And then what are you listening to on audio? Oh, Empire of Stone and Ice by Betty Levy. Uh, it's one of my Arctic thrillers. Um, he loves Arctic books. Yeah. yeah. And um, usually some of the Arctic thrillers that i read are a little on the happier side i'm about halfway through i'm going to billings tomorrow so i'll get the last five hours in and be done mm -hmm. and i don't think it's gonna be happy at oh, all yeah. it's, i think it's gonna be really really disastrous yeah so, kind of sounds that way yeah. from what you've said about but it but i like buddy levy's writing and it's really good it's mm -hmm. uh really kind of builds the characters so um i'm looking forward to finishing it yeah, getting it and pass, but I think it's gonna be heavy. Yeah. So those are Joel's books that are carrying into the month of May. Here are my two books that are carrying into the month of May. <laughs> I was thinking about two different books that I had started and not finished once I finished the Netanyahu's, and I decided for two reasons that I'd go back to the Grapes of Wrath. The first one is that not a lot of time has passed since I put this down. I put it down at the beginning of March, I think. And the other reason is that Joel and I were supposed to do a buddy read of this book in February, and he finished it, and I didn't. So I need to, I, I need to, I need, I need to honor the buddy read. It's and, fine. I did audio, yeah. so I made it a little bit quicker, and I think the reading is a little heavier. And, yeah. Um, and in February, uh, Jamie started getting nosebleeds, which is what sent us on this whole odyssey. So that's why I kind of froze out and paused. It's a dark book. It is dark. And uh, yeah, even the, when I picked it back up, somebody immediately got their fingers shot off. <laughs> it's like, oh God, I remember why I was stressed reading this. Um, but I'm really liking it and I look forward to being done. I have about a, a little more than 100 pages left. So it will be done quickly in the month of May. For the Queer TBR Tackle, and I will link information about that down below, I'm doing City of Night by John Rishi. This was something that Jen the Librarian had selected from hers. And actually, if she had not picked this one, it would have been the, one of the queer books that was on my TBR for the longest. So I'm glad I'm finally getting around to it. I'm doing it on, on audio. And the narrator is really good. Um, I think I'm 35% into it now. I had thought that I was further along. This is a big, 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 big book. Um... So it'll be interesting to see how I feel once I get to the end, because it did have that sense of like, oh, I must be like 60 to 70% through. And then I looked and I was, I was like 27%. I was like, oh, 
<laughs> there's a lot to go. I am really liking it, but it'll be interesting because there's essentially is no plot. So it'll be interesting to see if it can sustain that through the end of the book. Uh, but it is a queer classic about, uh, in the first chapter, he lives in El Paso and then he goes to New York City, becomes a hustler there. And at the part of that right now, he's in uh, hanging out around Pershing Square, uh, which I think is LA. Um, and he is meeting all kinds of characters. Like each chapter is essentially like so follows interactions with some character that he meets. Like right now he's been talking about somebody named Darling Dolly Dane. Oh. And the they love saying the whole name. So it's Darling Dolly Dane. Darling Dolly Dane. And it's it's kind of it has a rhythmic quality to it. But so that's the other thing I'm carrying through. Hopefully I'll be done with it by the end of this week. Um do you want to talk about what you have coming up first? Uh coming up in May once I finished um becoming Teddy is uh Arthur and Teddy, not the same Teddy. Yeah. Um coming out. And um it's about a grandfather and his grandson and um they're both kind of coming out as gay. Yeah. And uh I don't know too much more about it other than that. I think it just sounds really freaking adorable. Yeah. It's by Ryan Love. And um, it just sounds very adorable, and I'm sure it'll probably have its points too, but I'm excited about yeah. this. And that was recommended to us based on how much we loved uh, The Secret Life of Albert Ant Whistle. So I'm really hoping that it will have those same, as you were saying, a yeah. little bit of serious, um, kind of emotionally devastating stuff, but also like heartwarming, positive, moving in a good direction, fuzzy stuff. Yeah. So... Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, beyond this, I don't know. Um, actually, a couple that Greg just talked about, I, I may actually get in. But then when I get into uh, Pride Month, um, I got a couple things that I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, but I still want to keep it on a positive note for me because yeah. I am working on a Pride project for work. And with politics and what I'm working on, it's it's weighing really heavy on me. Yeah, so. gay history is not happy. Yeah. So, so I got to do some happy. Yeah, I to and I totally get that. I think I'm tr I'm going to try to balance serious and heavy as well. And uh, I will say I do have some other things lined up that I'll talk about. Are you are you done with coming yeah, up? Yeah, I'm done. Um, so I have like three things I might want to do in May, and then once I'm done with these, I plan to do becoming Ted and Arthur and Teddy are coming out. They might be for J uh, June for me because I'm already planning my pile of possibilities for Pride Month because that's what I do. Uh, but then, because I'm trying to finish Grapes of Wrath, I really want to do Whose Names Are Unknown by Sonora Bab. So the story here is that she was working at a social worker in um, labor camps or government camps where people who had been displaced by the Dust Bowl uh, were in California. And she would interview people, get their stories, find out what they needed, what they and all of that stuff. And then she would uh, pass her notes to her supervisor. Her supervisor was actually giving her notes to John Steinbeck. And I don't think it's known how if he used the notes for The Grapes of Wrath or not. But then she wrote a novel about the people that she met and all of that. But by the time she wrote it and submitted it to a publisher, the Grapes of Wrath had been published and they basically said, we're not competing with the Grapes of Wrath. So sorry, we're not going to publish this. So this was actually only published by the University of Oklahoma Press hmm. in after she had died, which was not that long ago, uh, 2004. It may have been just before she died. She died somewhere around 2004. Um, but so it, I feel like this is a good companion to the Grapes of Wrath and there actually is an audio on Scribd, so I'm going to play it by ear. Uh, I was planning to do the audio of this next, but uh, I just got, uh, The Furrows by Namali Sapel from Libby. So I'm gonna, probably going to do that next so I can fit it in because I want to try to read that before the Pulitzer announcement is coming. So I definitely want to do this timed with the Grapes of Wrath. So this will be coming. Uh, and that's probably another one I want to do because, yeah. um, God, this will be my fourth book on the Dust Bowl yeah. subject, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and uh, I think it'll be fascinating as a companion to The Grapes yeah. of Wrath. I definitely want to talk about it in my Pulitzer Prize project. Reading the Netanyahu's really made me want to get back to the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. This is the other book that I had started and didn't finish. This one, because last year I started it on audio, and I didn't like the audio. So I got it from the library, and I was loving it, but... I really wanted time and to savor it, so I renewed the book, and then I couldn't renew it anymore, and I was only halfway through. So I returned it to the library and pre-ordered the paperback from Montana Book Company, and in that little window between the library book and the paperback release, it's always dangerous when you put something down that you'll never get back to it, and I haven't gotten back to it, and I really want to. Um, You're enjoying it. I was loving it. Yeah. I was really loving it. So I'm really looking forward to finishing this. I'm hoping... 
I'll either do whose names are unknown in print or on audio, and then I'll pro I'm hoping I can pivot to this and finish it before Pride Month starts. Mm -hmm. And I've decided what my next Pulitzer book is going to be. Um, and it's probably not a surprise. I have the Franklin Library edition of it. It's So Big by Edna Ferber. Now, I, o I always want to reserve the right to change my mind, but this is my current plan. And basically, when I was thinking about what I might want to do for my Pulitzer Prize project, I was looking at... I'm really enjoying some of the early ones because I feel like I, I, I've put myself in the mindset of a lot of the early prizes. And uh, when I read His Family, which is the first Pulitzer Prize winner, other bo I was looking at other books that had been released and I read Fanny Herself by Edna Ferber and I loved it. I really loved it. It's going to be one of my favorite books of the year. Oh, good. So the natural progression is that because I really want to read more Edna Ferber, I've gotten a couple of other her books by her. You found Giant for me at mm -hmm. that place in Billings that you were talking about. Um, so I really want to read another one of hers. So it's kind of a natural progression to think about doing her actual Pulitzer Prize winning book. So this is my plan right now. And a lot of it is going to depend on whether or not I manage to get to it in the month of May. Because come June, I need to pivot to Pride reading, um, no matter what. So that's kind of a, like a loose plan for what could be coming up in May. And uh, yeah, sweet. That's where we're at. I don't get to do book hauls with you, so I, oh, just, right, I, right. I just want to throw this yes. out because I've been wanting something like this for a long time, and yesterday was um, Independent Bookstore Day, and um, I went to Abby, my bookseller, who I, she bats wonderful. a thousand for me. She's wonderful. She knows what I like. Yeah. Anyway, I wanted a map book, and she found the Atlas of the World. Yeah. It's a um, National Geographic. This is a gorgeous book it is it um really well it's national geographic it's national geographic but not only does it have great maps but it has a lot of um history it has um interesting facts interesting facts it will tell you every state their flag its mm -hmm. population it's the, of every state country around the world yeah it even goes into um the solar system yeah and Everywhere we have flown a mission around the moon or Jupiter or Mars or sun. Yeah. So there's a lot of facts in here. And it I'm absolutely footprint. loving. Yeah, carbon footprint. Yeah. It even has a big section on um, the waters of the world. Tell them how excited I got when I opened the first page. Uh, he got very, very, I got very excited. excited. Did I scream out? <laughs> you kind of did. I knew I, something was up. There's my yeah. um, waters. What was on the first page that excited me that much? I remember the place we got married is one of the first photos in the book. Yeah. That is Lake Moraine. We got married, like, right here. Yeah. <laughs> and we are going back uh, for our 10th anniversary yeah. in July. What was the other photo that was on that page? Um, or on the other so opposite page? Yeah. There was something else that got me excited. Oh. Oh, an elephant. Joel loves elephants. I, I love elephants. So we're doing the National Geographic, um, the Sikh. Secrets, Secrets of the Elephants. The Secrets of the Elephants. And Narrated by Natalie Portman, whose voice her. is amazing. Yeah. So. And I'm, and James Cameron did uh, the directing. Oh, no wonder it's yeah. really well filmed. So it's beautiful. But. It's interesting. It's sad. And um, yeah. I want to meet an elephant someday. So someday. if anybody knows how I can meet an elephant, let me know. Yeah. We'll make it happen. Yeah. But thank you. I almost forgot that. And that yeah. is a really great find. Gorgeous book. But we play trivia a lot. And we were mm -hmm. always talking like different. What was a country we were just like? Where exactly is that? And so we don't have an atlas to look it up. So. My geography is terrible, so the, I don't. This was not it. But when we looked at a map of South America, Venezuela was one hundred percent not where I thought it was. <laughs> I thought it was <laughs> west of yeah. where it is, but, which is embarrassing. I, I, I'm not proud of that. But it is, yeah. yeah. But it's like what country in South America? In South America, does not have a coastline. It's like, and so we yeah. just don't have an atlas. So I've always wanted this. This is gorgeous, yeah. and I love it. And we bought a coffee table this year, so yes. we actually have a place to put it and let it sit with some of our other yeah. fun books. It's so, beautiful. Yeah. So, so and then you'll hear about some of the other books in my actual book haul, because uh, like one book you bought, but I want to read, so I'll I'll talk about it there. The one Chelsea recommended oh, yeah. to you. Yeah. So you'll have to stay tuned. That's a tease. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully I'll read it by the time he does a book haul, or next we do a wrap-up. I mean, either way. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, But we'll find out. Stay tuned. We will. Yeah. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. You're a constant delight. I love it. <laughs> and thank you. As always, we really appreciate your time. And I've made him blush. <laughs> so it's time to go. Uh, as always, I appreciate your time. And uh, we will be back. Until then, happy reading. Bye. Bye.